Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Sherlock Case Connection by Lucky Duck Games. The game plays two to four players, takes 30 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Sherlock Case Connection, you are going to be playing as Sherlock Holmes and Watson, attempting to connect the clues to the cases you're trying to solve. There's different locations on the board and different events that take place, as well as clues to those events you'll be gathering to form connections to the cases that you're trying to solve. Each case is worth a unique amount of victory points, and your objective is to get to nine, to vic nine victory points, and if you can do that uh, before anybody else, you're going to win. Of course, it's going to involve you trying to go to these locations and pick the things you need to make these connections to kind of intertwine with each other and get those connections before other players. Will you be able to do that before they do, or will you uh, not be able to solve those cases in time? Uh, and Moriarty ends up winning in the end. Let's take a look at the game and, of course, how to play and how to set up. The setup for the game Sherlock Case Connection is very simple. Take the four locations and place them next to each other on the board within reach of all players. Then go ahead and take these little tokens here and place them all face down and shuffle them. There are two decks of cards, and both of them you're going to shuffle and place within reach of all players. And there are two types of tokens, wilds and bonus points, which you can go ahead and stack and place next to the board within reach of all players. Then you're going to go ahead and take these guys here, these tokens here, randomly assign them to each spot on the different locations. There's going to be either two or three spaces on each of the location slots. The same will be said for the cards. These are basically going to be events that take place in the story. You'll shuffle the deck up and place them out within reach of all players on the board spaces provided. Then, after that, give each player two cases to solve. These guys here, you're going to be selecting one of them and discarding the other. Then they're going to have a certain number of victory points uh, and value, basically. And if you're able to complete them, you will gain that value. Harder ones are going to give you more victory points, and weaker ones, less value points, are going to be easier to solve. If you, of course, solve them, you'll continue moving the game forward, but that's basically the setup for the game. So playing the game Sherlock Case Connection is even simpler than setting it up. Basically, on your turn, everyone's going to be revealing their lead cards, which will denote how many victory points you're going to get if you solve it, and you'll place it face up in front of you, and so will every other player. Then, if it's your turn, you're going to select a location, and then you will select two items on that location. You have two options. You have the thread cards and the tokens, which I'm just going to call cards and tokens. And you're going to pick them from the location. So I'll go ahead and take these guys here, this card here and this token here. And your objective is to attach these cards and these tokens to your main lead card. And to do that, you have to match color with color uh, based on what these guys want. So this one here wants a pink token on the bottom here and a pink token on the top here. And if you can do that, the next thing you're going to need is the other token on your lead cards uh, to attach to this specific spider web network. And if you do that, you'll solve this bottom portion of the card and you'll move on to the left and or right and or top side if those exist. And then the next player is going to get a chance to go. So I've selected two, and then this player over here is going to go ahead and select two. They'll look at their sides here, what they need, and then they're going to go ahead and take. So, they're, okay, I need, uh, I don't know, I need a pink or I need a yellow on the right-hand side. Uh, this one here. I'll take this one, and I'll take this one here. So I've got my pink and my pink, and I will then place them, attach them together, pink and pink, and attach a pink token here, and put it next to me. And that is going to uh, basically connect the, this, uh, this token with this card to my lead. And then the next player is going to get a chance to go. And you'll go, go back and forth up until the point where there's only going to be one item on two locations. When that happens, the board gets refreshed and then players can continue playing from there. Uh, another thing to note too is when you complete your lead card, you're going to take this card, set it aside, and score victory points for the card. Additionally, if any of your cards have any bonuses, like these guys here, which are basically tokens that will grant you as a wild color, or maybe it's going to be something like this one here, which is going to grant you a victory point uh, in addition to whatever points you get for your lead that you've solved. And finally, the last one is this one over here. This one is going to grant you an extra card to draw for leads when choosing them before starting your next lead. So I've completed this guy here, I move all the cards to the side, I'll be able to select a certain number of tokens and cards based on what the rules say, I'll draw a certain number of lead cards based on if I have that extra bonus card or not, select one of them, and then put it face up in front of me and attempt to go ahead and complete that. Sometimes I'll have extra bonuses and benefits that I can use to instantly connect, and other times I won't. Regardless though, I'm going to be attempting to get nine victory points, and if I've got this four here, that means I only need five more. So if I get a three and then a two, that will be enough for me to solve the case connection 
and uh, fulfill the case requirements. And of course, everybody else is doing the same. And that's basically the idea of the game. Select a location, take two tokens and or cards from there, place it down to connect to my spiderweb network and pass. If anything needs to be replenished because there's only two locations with one item on them, replenish them. And whenever you solve these guys, you'll score victory points based on the cards connected and of course the lead card and any benefits that you're going to gain, tokens that you're going to be able to keep that you will be able to utilize to the next round and rinse and repeat. And that's basically the idea. Get those nine points and win the game with Sherlock. Okay, so Sherlock Case Connection is a bit of a puzzle game. It's a bit of a resource management game. You're going to be basically attempting to find these uh, tokens here, these proof tokens that you will need to connect to your cards and selecting these as best as you can. Uh, in general, there's always going to be a best answer for you. Uh, some of the cards will contain bonus tokens and if you have the option between those or one that's not there, it'll be basically whether or not it's going to be more difficult to connect cards. Because sometimes if you need blue and yellow and you find a card that has blue, and then a card and then that card same card has green on another side you'll have to go blue and then green and then from green you can go to yellow and that will solve the spiderweb network which will take longer your turns will take longer your objective is to complete these cards as quickly as possible now of course you're going to be able to finish a round so if you can get 10 points when the person who had nine completed uh, the requirements, you can win the game. But for the most part, your objective is just to simply finish your spiderweb before anybody else does in the most efficient way possible. And efficiency is the key aspect of this game. And because you are limited to the number of tokens you can use, what locations you can go to, and of course the different types of cards that you can choose from, you're going to have a limited option. And those options are going to be either the best possible option or the uh, not so great options. And you're always gonna to wanna to try to go for those best options. Sometimes there's not going to be a card that you're going to need, that you're gonna want uh, on this board here. If you need a yellow on the right, eh, there just might not be one for rounds and rounds. It's possible that you just might not get that card based on the cards that come out from the deck and you'll have to wait for everybody else. Whether you're in last place or in first place. There's not really a catch-up mechanic in the game to kind of keep it balanced. Uh, and, and because of that, it gives people a chance to kind of push ahead in different random ways. This game's basically random. Uh, suffice to say, I did not like Sherlock Case Connection. I did not enjoy the idea that I wasn't able to get pieces that I wanted, that there was almost always the most optimal piece to get, provided nobody else took that piece. And sometimes, uh, quite a big bit of the time, I would be the last person to select a location and then it would allow the board to be refreshed which means I always got the least amount of choice when it came to picking the certain cards and that drove me off the wall. Uh, now, let's talk about the good, though. This game does do the job of theming. You feel like you're attempting to solve a case and you want to connect the case with the use of these uh, tokens here, the use of the cards, putting them together with different parts of the uh, Sherlock Holmes, the uh, basically Benedict Cumberbatch version of Sherlock, which I very much so enjoy. This is one of my favorite TV shows. And it does a great job of theming in that way. You're going to get a lot of different images from the TV show and, of course, the four different locations you'll be utilizing and you're just trying to puzzly connect these pieces and it works pretty well. It feels nice taking the pieces and it feels nice to get those bonuses as you go throughout the game. And of course, there are some little unique things you can do, but there's also some unique things that you can't do that I thought you could do. You can't make closed loops that can kind of benefit you to score bonus points if you're able to pull it off, which I would have liked to have seen. I actually thought it was kind of weird that they didn't let you do that. Um, I didn't like the idea that the board refreshed at a certain point and somebody was ultimately going to get in trouble. Sometimes there was just no card out there that was available that you could utilize. It was just kind of like, I wish I could do more with this game. I wish there was at least another location maybe to solve that problem. I wish that the board just refreshed every time you drew cards. I, I don't really know the answer. I'm not going to try and solve the uh, problem with this, but it just really wasn't for me. Now, I think if you're a Sherlock Holmes fan and you like the puzzling aspect of the game, you enjoy the quality the artwork and the idea of solving cases by placing pieces together and there's a bit of like you know oh I hope they don't take the piece I want or I'm going to try and take this piece and you have kind of this connection of clues that you want to solve uh, you're going to enjoy this game and I, you know, I played through a couple of the a couple times I think I went two through three times and after that I was just like I, I'm not I'm not going to do this anymore uh, but there were people at the table who really enjoyed the game and in some instances the game was very close it was anybody's game somebody we thought was going to win and getting stalled 
world because they didn't have any options on the table to choose from or because uh, the, the cards that they needed were not available for them and they needed a refresh which just wasn't coming for them uh, in, the, in that specific time. And there was of course a, a way that the board kind of rotates a bit to allow you to do that based on I would say the number of players. Uh, with four players it could be kind of, I don't know, more bizarre. Uh, regardless though, if you're interested in the game, I suggest you take a look at it. Go ahead and probably watch a playthrough of the game to see what you think of the game. It's very, very rare where I'm not a big fan of a Lucky Duck game because I really, really enjoy their work, but this one just really wasn't for me. Uh, but I know that there's an audience out there for it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Sherlock Case Connection. If you're interested in picking up this game, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and take a look. As, of course, the website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to check out our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can watch us play games just like this one. And in fact, you might see us play this one on a live stream, just so that you get an idea of whether it's something that you would enjoy or not. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. And as always, I look forward to solving the case with you next time. Tells you that there is going to be uh, what they call uh, the... Mm -hmm. <sighs> or you'll... Damn it, damn it, damn it. Setting the game up is even simpler than playing uh, lead thread proof. Okay. Hard or a thread, you know, the thread to, uh, man, man, proof thread lead. Why is this so difficult?